Well, I thought I'd do a little uh, repair work on my uh, cornfield craziness heating enhancement system. <laughs> That's my uh, kerosene heater that I use just to kind of help uh, take the chill off in the mornings or whatever in here while the furnace has a chance to kick it back into daytime mode. And uh, what I got is I got the kerosene heater. And then on top of that I have a pan that I put about a gallon of water in and uh, and there's two uh, jars of candle wax, there's no wicks in them anymore and a fan and uh, the way this works out is when this heater gets hot it creates a little bit of a humidity, humidifying action with the water that's in there and the uh, candle wax kind of counteracts the smell of the kerosene Kind of makes it actually it makes it smell kind of good in here and then this fan blows the heat into the living room somewhat and I use a ceiling fan to push down so that pushes the heat down to this fan and in there and uh, I can actually raise the temperature in here up to um, probably about six degrees above what the furnace has got it at at any given time at least six degrees yeah, that's about the highest I've seen it push it up, but that's pretty good for being in a completely different room And then when you walk through this dining room, it's nice and comfortable in here usually nice and toasty warm And then it even kind of pushes a little bit of heat into my office Not too much in the kitchen, but then a little bit into the wall actually quite a bit into the washroom so but anyways what the problem I have with this is uh, It's got this uh, igniter and the igniter does not ignite it. And you turn the heater on and you push down on the igniter. Right now it's not even doing anything. It's a little bit sticky, but at any rate it doesn't uh, the igniter doesn't get quite into the wick. So I'm going to tear this thing apart and see if there's anything I can do for it. Um, I've worked on these before where I couldn't do anything with them and I've worked on before where I was able to. So we'll just see what what case is going to be on this one. Okay, the first thing you do is you take your handle and raise it so it's horizontal and then you pull it straight out and that takes and pulls it out of your um, little holes there and then you just kind of work it up on out there. And then the second thing you do is you take these two screws on the sides here and you loosen those up. They don't have to be, screws don't have to be taken out, you just loosen them up till you can work that and clips out of the top and then this top lifts off. Then once your uh, top's off, your sides, your front and rear sides just lift up and you gotta take the sides out and then they come right off there just that easy. Of course it's easier to do with two hands. And I thought I might say this is the uh, Kerosun Omni 105 so this is just how you take apart this particular model. Now, they're all quite a bit different. They're all fairly easy to take apart actually, but uh, that's this model, so. Then once the sides are off, then you got this top, and that just, um, I believe it turns, part of a turn, uh, and that lifts off of there. Okay, and then after the top is off, you got three little uh, thumb screws on the side here. Take those off. Uh, one each side of the front, and then there's one in the back. And uh, then this unit here just lifts right up off of there. Lift it off, it's out to the side. Now you're down to your actual heater goodies. If you want to clean things up, this here part right here, that just kind of lifts up out of there. You've got to kind of wiggle around because this clip's sticking out the side, but. Uh, just kind of work around get that up out of there and then you can take this part here and Dump out all your little dust bunnies and stuff like that if you need to or whatever you want to do with that And uh, now on this here for me to get down to this igniter better. I've got three little Phillips screws In here that I take out and then this ring will lift up out of here And uh, Then uh, once I get that off we'll go on to the next part Okay, once you get that ring out of the way, then there's one screw down in here that holds this whole igniter on. You take out that one Phillips screw and 
and your igniter comes off. Now, if your igniter is just burnt out, if, if all you got to do is uh, replace your igniter, this thing here is just like a, a bulb. You just twist it, turn it, it pulls right out of there. But I believe this igniter is still good. I'm not positive, but I'll check it a little bit. You just check it by putting batteries in there and uh, operating your igniter. Now mine, mine is uh, all gummed up and everything, so I'm gonna have to take it out and clean it and lubricate it and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you real quick how this igniter works. Um, let's see if I can put this camera down here and there we go. Now when you push this lever down, that actually brings this part here back. This is kind of like a little um, still don't know if you can see that. This is like a little shield that comes up against your wick actually. That comes back out of the way. Mine's gummed up so bad I can't hardly show you but um, <laughs> if I can get it to slide here. I'm trying to watch the camera lens and the, do it. So anyways, and then this part here comes forward. Well when this comes forward, if you can see up underneath here there's a little copper tab up in here, up inside there, and that's your um, ground side of your batteries. It's the uh, negative terminal. And then that provides the ground for this socket for your igniter, and then this white goes up just like a regular light bulb. It's got a center post in here, and that's your positive for your igniter. So once that comes up and touches this ground tab, then that starts your igniter uh, glowing. Probably this thing works gummy. I definitely got some cleaning and cleaning and stuff to do on that. But anyways, uh, you kind of get the idea. Then that that actually glows, and since this is out of the way, your glow is up against your wick. It's got to come far enough to touch the wick. They can't hardly do it unless it actually touches it. And uh, then that lights your your heater. So I got to take this probably out into the workshop and. Uh, clean it all up as good as I can and, and lubricate it and see if I can get it to working good. Okay, I got her all cleaned up and now if I can hold this right so I can show you. Easier if I had this camera somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, it works pretty good now. Works real nice. Let's see if maybe you can do it this way. There we go. Works way better. Okay, so this part here, I'm ready to test the igniter on it and see how that does. And I want to show you something else to check on your heater while you got it apart. Now, on your wick control, um, this is your shutoff lever. And if you crank this all the way up and push on that lever, it should snap down, which mine does pretty well now. I had to lubricate mine up a little bit. But something is kind of important on these heaters, if you, especially if you use them inside the house like I'm using mine, and I, I think you're not supposed to, but who buys a kerosene heater in order to heat up the outdoors? I don't know. Anyways, this is your safety device. This is your tip-over device. Just crank her all the way up and then take that kicker once. I mean, it kind of simulates tipping your kerosene heater. So this should shut all the way down, which mine does now. And... Uh, so uh, now we're ready to start putting her back. Well, I'm going to test the uh, igniter, and then I'll put her back together. Okay, the way you want to test these, actually, is to leave your wick all the way down, then push your igniter on. And, see, mine's glowing, but it's not a bright enough glow. It looks like my igniter is bad after all. So, um, I think you can buy these down at any hardware store. So I think I'll, before I put this back together anymore, I think I'm going to go ahead and get a... Uh, new igniter because they got to get pretty bright actually they got to get pretty hot in order to ignite that and uh, that's just not quite enough I don't believe I, it looks to me like it's almost burnt too so I think it's just barely doing it so yeah I think I'll go ahead and get me another igniter before I finish this part off and then we'll see how she does I gotta put some more kerosene in this thing I kind of let it go almost empty before I tore it apart because it makes it a little bit lighter to move around and uh, not le not as much of a chance of spilling kerosene so I'll get an igniter and we'll finish this off well I kind of discovered something I was kind of playing around with this igniter and I noticed that uh, part of the guard on the front was bent in or it was really close to the element 
So I bent that back out and look how much brighter that is. I don't know if you can tell through this or not, but that's uh, I, that looks a lot brighter. So I'm going to put this thing together real quick and see if that'll actually ignite it. Okay, here's the test. We'll see what it does here. I'm going to go ahead and open I, I think I can tell. I don't know if I can tell or not. This one here is a little bit harder to see if your igniter is working on because it, uh, yep, yeah, she's lit. Well, good deal. That's, that works for me. We'll put her back together then. That's a little bit easier than having to use a lighter. Well, she's all put together, guards all put back on, and I got her heating up. Got the water back in there. And, uh, once she gets good and hot, then I'll go ahead and turn on this fan and the one above it. Actually, the one, the one in the ceiling comes on first. I'll turn that on in just a few minutes and then get some good heat coming off of there. Then I'll turn on this other fan and we'll get the old system a going again. Cut down on the propane. Thanks for watching.